All right, so we just used definitions in D3 in order to figure out how to put background images on SVG elements. So 10 second review, um, we have this index file here. There's an SVG, there's a section called defs. Defs are definitions of reusable components. The one that we're most interested in is a pattern component that has an image inside of it. So this image points to snow.jpg, um, which is an image of Jon Snow. And then we can apply this as a fill to any object on the page by saying URL, pound symbol, or hashtag Jon Snow. So this here matches with the ID of the pattern. So what we are going to do is we're going to figure out how to apply this to D3. So this is the code that we are using. We're reusing the code um, from uh, a couple tutorials ago where we made these, this bubble graph of different artists' album sales. So we have um, a name, an ID, sales, decade, and an image path. So the image path will be useful later, but just know that each one of these circles is a different artist and it is sized according to the millions of albums they have sold um, over the course of their career. So we'll come back to this in a bit. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna figure out how to add um, definitions to this page through D3, and we're gonna make everyone turn into Jon Snow. So um, what we're going to do is we are going to add definitions to the page. So we need to create a section that is called defs. The best thing to do would be to add this right under the SVG, but it seems to work no matter where we add it, so let's just add it the easiest spot. So um, let's take the code that we want to steal. So we're going to copy um, from defs to defs, and I'm just going to put it in here in a comment. Um, but we don't need the marker. We don't need the linear gradient. We don't need the radial gradient. We don't need that comment. We don't need this. This is the content here that we would like to add into our page. So let's add it into the SVG. So we want to add a defs to this page. So var defs equals svg.append defs. So it's just going to add a defs tag inside of the SVG. We're going to save that as a variable because we're going to need to use it later. Um, but for now, just know when you make defs, save it by themselves. Inside of that defs, we need to add a pattern element. So defs.append pattern. Pretty simple, right? But now comes the crazy part. The part that I hate about doing SVG defs in D3, and that is translating all of these attributes to something that is inside of uh, the SVG. So we could just, we can't just type it all out. What we need to do is in the same way that for the circles, we do ATTRR, ATTR fill, and that makes this circle have a, an R and this circle have a fill. We need to do the same thing for this pattern tag. So. ATTR ID. The ID is right here. It's John Snow. Great. Now height. 100%. Great. The next one, width. 100%. The next one, pattern content units. Not typing that out. And the next one, and then it is uh, object bounding box. Okay, so now what we need to do is we've made defs, we've made a pattern, we can just refresh to make sure that this is working too. So if we refresh this page, we go div id chart, look in the SVG, and we see there are some defs, and we see yes, there is a pattern, um, that pattern is currently empty. We need to add inside of that pattern this little image section. So we can just keep chaining this together. Dot append image, ATTR, height is one and width is one, height of one, width of one, 
preserve aspect ratio none. XML namespace, xlink. I think we might not need this one because D3 does namespacing by itself, but just to be safe, we'll keep it. And we'll say xlink href, xlink href, snow.jpg, snow.jpg. All right, so what we just did then was we created a definition section. We added a single pattern to it, gave it an ID so we can refer to it later, um, set the height, width, pattern content units. What does that do? Google it. And then we put an image inside of that. So save it, refresh the page, look in ID, or look in div, SVG, G, defs, pattern, Great, so it looks like this works. We have a depth section with a pattern and an image inside of it. Now, let's apply this pattern to all of our circles. So when we were doing this, um, is this still open? Yes, in order to make Jon Snow appear in this circle or in this rectangle, we had to do URL, hashtag, uh, the ID. So John Snow is the ID of the pattern, so we just said URL hashtag John Snow. And we can do the same thing here. So if we scroll down, scroll down, scroll down to where we set the fill to be light blue, it is now going to be URL hash, and we look up, oh, it's still the same. We called it John Snow. So John Snow. You just have to make sure that this matches this. So save and refresh, and now one million John Snows uh, for our pleasure. Now, if we click these, uh, last time we made it so that you can see what this is. This is Madonna, Holland Oats, and the Eagles. Um, none of those musicians look like John Snow, so probably we should make those images not reflect John Snow, but rather reflect the artists themselves. So. There is a folder that I have called images, and it has images of um, everyone in it. They've been cropped to be square. And if we look at our Excel spreadsheet, there is a column called image path. So we know where the image for Steely Dan is. We know where the image for Fetty Wap is. So we're going to be able to use these in our code. So, all right, back to our code. Now, we made one pattern for Jon Snow. And then we called it by saying URL Jon Snow. The problem is that to make a pattern that has a Jon Snow image in, in it, we needed to make one pattern with one image in it. If we want to make, uh, how many of these do we have here? If we want to make 15 different patterns, are we going to manually do this 15 different times? No, that would be crazy. It would be, it would be nuts. Um, so this is where the magic of D3 comes in. So how many circles do we have here? Oh, we have 15 circles. How did we get these 15 separate circles to show up? Well, to make 15 different circles, we just did that select all data, enter append, and that added 15 different circles into our SVG. We're gonna end up doing the exact same thing with patterns. We need to add 15 extra patterns um, inside of our defs, and so we are just going to do defs and then a select all, enter append. So that instead of making 15 different circles, we make 15 different patterns, one pattern for every single one of our artists because we're going to give them each a unique image. So, um, we don't need a var there. So defs.selectAll. Now we want to create patterns, so you might think to do pattern here, but that's actually going to interfere um, with the Jon Snow pattern that we've already made. So let's give it a class. Uh, we'll call it artist pattern bind it to our data points, enter, append, pattern. 
let's just look at our page and see if this worked. So we're saying go into the definitions, find, here, let's just set the class to, we're saying go into the defs, find all the artist patterns, whatever those are, um, bind them to our data points, put a new pattern in for every single one of our data points and give it a class. So refresh, open, 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 open. So we now have 15 blank patterns in here. And what we need to do is make our pattern in the exact same way that we made this pattern here. So it needs the same attributes, except the ID will be different, um, and it needs to have an image inside with a different uh, href. So we can actually just cut and paste. Copy everything that we did to this pattern, and then move it on down here. So every single pattern is going to get the exact same height with pattern content units, um, height with preserve aspect ratio, but also ID. So let's let's change these things real quick. So instead of the ID being John Snow, if we look at our Excel sheet. There is an ID, there is a name, those are both unique. Um, let's just, we'll use name for now. So, return d.name. So now the name, instead of being always John-Snow, it'll be, say, Madonna or the Eagles. And if you think, oh no, you're doing something wrong, we'll figure out why I'm doing something wrong later. Uh, and additionally, instead of always using snow.jpg, we want to look at our data point and then find the correct image URL in image path. So let's return d.imagePath. Let's refresh this. Look inside. And sure, we sure enough have a pattern with the ID of Madonna, and then it is going for Madonna.png. Wonderful. So instead of always using John Snow, so these are our circles. Um, actually, let's move this before our circles just to think about the fact that we are creating our definitions before we're actually drawing our circles. So we have our circles here. Um, we're binding our data, blah, blah, blah. Um, we're setting our fill, and the fill is always going to be URL John Snow. So let's change this. Um, Let's just save it like this and refresh to make sure it still works as Jon Snow. Yes. Now, we need to change this so instead of Jon Snow, it will do something like Madonna. So what we need to do is just change it so that we're using d.name here. Because in the same way that we set the ID according to the name, we're now going to refer to it by the name when we're using uh, URL fill. We refresh, and some of them work, and some of them don't work. So if we look at this, we see that yes, it's saying URL Madonna, and it's successfully grabbing Madonna. Um, URL Kesha, and it's success successfully grabbing Kesha. Um, but let's say over here, uh, Nicki Minaj is not working. And why is that? Well, it's this friend right here, the space. Anytime you are giving something an ID or a class, you don't want to put spaces in it. If you put spaces in a class, it means you're assigning multiple classes. If you put spaces in an ID, it's just going to break. So we're going to fix this, and the first way we're going to fix it is going to be wrong, and then we're going to fix it in the right way a few seconds later. So um, let us go first up here to where we set the ID. Now the problem is this space. So let's just replace the space with a dash. That seems pretty reasonable. Um, we could also do two lowercase, just to, I don't know. Things look better when they're lowercase, I think. And we want to make sure that we use the same code here and down here. So instead of d.name, we're now going to look for, let's say, uh, URL uh, Nikki. Minaj. 
notebook coming up here, and it's now going to be the dash equals. So anything we do to ID here, we have to also do to fill here because this URL has to match that ID. This is the pattern, this is the circle fill. Refresh, great. They're mostly working except one over here isn't working. Hall and Oates is not working. So well, let's look at Nicki Minaj real quick and we see that she does successfully have a dash there. But if we look over here at Hall and Oates, there's Hall dash and space Oates. Now a weird thing with replace in JavaScript is it only replaces the very first instance. So only the first space is gonna be replaced by that dash, by that hyphen. Except you think there's like a do it globally or replace all, but there's not. We need to actually use a regular expression and we need to make it a global regular expression. And you're probably sobbing, you're sweating a little bit right now, um, but really all you need to do is this. This means space, replace it globally. You could make this a little bit fancier. You could say replace anything that is not um, A through Z, um, one through zero, zero through nine, I guess. Um, anything that's not a normal ASCII character. For example, Kesha is on here, and if you used a dollar sign, it would break some things, but to clean that up for us. So we are just going to do this guy here and this guy here, because um, again, these two have to match. So replace every single space with a hyphen, and you are good to go now. Um, so what we did was we figured out how to make a separate defs for every single one of our artists so that they each have their specific background image and their own specific pattern. Um, so one pattern per person, one image per person, and then we applied those patterns to the circles. So there are going to be two select all enter appends, one for a pattern and one for the circles. Um, all right, and in the next video, we're going to figure out how to manipulate our forces to make them split according to whether they are in the uh, pre-2000 or post-2000 group.